here we are running Cyberpunk 2077 at 40 frames per second. But check it out. We're going to now click on times three mode in frame generation in the lossless scaling app. And uh, keep your eye on the top left corner of the screen. We're going to get 120 FPS popping up there. And it's actually running 120 FPS now. I am seeing 120 frames per second, and they do look smooth. However, the game itself isn't actually running at 120 frames per second. It's running at 40. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen where you see the NVIDIA performance overlay, it's only reporting 40. But I promise you the app, the lossless scaling app, is not just drawing a 120 on the top left corner of the screen so that you get a placebo effect. It really is showing you 120 frames per second on the screen. Now on YouTube, you can only see 60 frames per second, so you're not gonna get the full effect of this. Keep that in mind. I can perhaps do something in editing, but really there's just no way to accurately communicate what I'm seeing. Speaking of what I'm seeing, I'm also seeing some issues. Here, let me hop out of the car here for a second. Uh, why don't you look up here, and I think you will be able to see some garbling in motion on those that building. Also, if I just spin around, look at my targeting reticle. So the uh, in the center of the screen there, the targeting reticle, do you see it's getting all sorts of uh, weird look to it, kind of, kind of, uh, just like I said, garbling. Well, if I turn off the scaling, all of that will go away. So with the scaling turned off, you can see that we're now getting that mouse cursor to be absolutely stable in the center of the screen. And if I look back up at this building with those straight lines and everything, and I pan back and forth across it, we are not having any issues on that breaking up or looking weird. However, my overall frame rate is 40 frames per second, and it does not look anywhere near as smooth as when I kick on this frame generation. Here, you'll watch when it kicks in, things should look smoother even on a 60 FPS YouTube video, but I can tell you in person at 120, it's very noticeable increase to the smoothness, but again, also very noticeable that we are getting some artifacts on the screen right now. So we can see that while frame generation is really cool, there's no perfect substitute for actually just running the game at a higher frame rate. Uh, you get the actual increase to uh, responsiveness that frame generation doesn't get you, and you don't have those image quality artifacts. But man, PC upgrades can be expensive, so check out today's sponsor, Jawa.gg, that can help you out with that. Uh, they are claiming the best price to performance builds on the internet. They are confidently saying it. And if you want to test them out on that, sh click the Shop Gaming PCs button, and I can actually help out the value with that using code OWEN10 to get you $10 off your first purchase. Really check it out. Some of the best deals are the used market and, and other people's uh, built systems uh, on this site. And also, you can help fund your upgrade by selling your old hardware. You can list it yourself, set your own prices, or take all the hassle out of it by clicking their Get an Instant Offer button, uh, where you tell them the GPU model and condition. Uh, they give you an instant offer. You take them up on it. They, they give you the shipping label and everything. And you know what? If you're not sure what you should be buying, check out their Discord community with over 10,000 members to get that one-on-one -on -one feedback to make sure you're getting a great deal. So, Definitely check this out for that full-on upgrade. And now let's get back to talking about frame generation. I think it's gonna be a personal preference thing for people on whether or not uh, they prefer the increased f uh, fluidity uh, with the downside of the uh, uh, image quality artifacts versus whether they prefer um, you know, the lower frame rate without the image quality artifacts. So again, I just don't think this is gonna be a great solution for everybody or in every game. But I, I think it is really cool that it can do this because uh, uh, what exactly is this? So Lossless Scaling is an app you can buy on Steam. I think it costs about $7, so it isn't free, but it's also not incredibly expensive. And by the way, if you're watching this video when it launches, I have a review copy of the Times 3 frame generation mode, which releases on June 6th, 2024. Uh, if you're uh, watching this video when it launches, you would only have access to Times 2 mode, which is still pretty cool, but uh, I'm getting a review access to the Times 3 mode, so just throwing that out there. Now, Times 2 mode would actually have an easier job because again, why are we getting all of the, the, the garbling? Here, when I tabbed out, that kind of disabled. So here, let's rescale it. 
Uh, by the way, there's hotkeys for scaling. You don't have to use the, the app built in there as well. So again, I can instantly tell this, the, the, the fluidity of motion has totally smoothed out. However, again, we're getting the, those artifacts. So why is that happening? Well, the way these app, uh, w the way frame generation works here is the game is, like I said, rendering 40 frames per second, and then the app is going to slightly delay showing you the most recent frame, and it's going to take the uh, previous frame and the and the most recent available frame, and it's going to interpolate what it thinks is happening in between. The uh, app's developer told me they use a uh, their own custom neural network for doing this. And then it, uh, uh, the times three mode just timestamps two frames that it has interpolated as you know, you know, one third of the time in between, um, you know, spaces it evenly between the two real frames, and away you go. Now notice I'm going from 40 to 120, and I'm keeping it locked at 40. That's pretty important because one of the other big downsides here is that it doesn't seem to play nicely with variable refresh rate. So to get this to look nice, I actually had to completely disable G Sync. And I think you would also want to uh, disable FreeSync as well, although I have not tested this on AMD cards. On recent AMD GPUs, you have a similar um, uh, method of doing this through your driver, which is AMD Fluid Motion Frames, AFMF, although it's not at all the same thing. Lossless scaling is its own thing, and but it's uh, accomplishing a similar thing which once again means it has some of the similar drawbacks. Again, with the, uh, with the image quality, this looks a lot worse than the image quality you get from if you, for example, uh, would use the built-in uh, DLSS 3 frame generation if you had a supported GPU, or FSR 3 frame generation, because, again, we're getting all this garbling because the external app doesn't have access to the game's uh, motion vectors, and it also doesn't have access to any uh, information about what is a HUD element and what is not. And that's why we get that uh, garbling on the, on the cursor, uh, whereas uh, if the game could tell the, the frame generation, oh, this is a you know, HUD layer, don't frame generate on that. Um, that's how you can do with uh, DLSS 3 frame generation, FSR 3 frame generation, which is an advantage for those. So this is very, to be clear, this is very much not as good quality as DLSS 3 or FSR 3 frame generation, but it gives similar quality, although different, to what you get from AMD's fluid motion frames through their driver. One difference here is this one doesn't give up the way that one does, which means sometimes you can see more egregious um, you know, uh, artifacts to the frame generation, but it also means the frame case pacing can be very smooth. Again, though, without variable refresh rate support, I have to make sure that the game is rendering at an even multiple of my monitor's refresh rate. Right now I'm on a capture card, which is 119.94 FPS apparently, uh, which is why this isn't showing 40, it's showing 39. Really, it's at one third V-Sync is what we're doing here. So you have to, and, and your game needs to be able to maintain that constantly, because if it drops below that frame rate, uh, you'll have more issues with the interpolation and the frame pacing. But if you can get the game settings to run at that stably, it's going to look pretty good. Also, the higher your base frame rate, uh, the better things will look. Now I'm on 120 FPS capture card, so the best, uh, you know, the highest frame rate we'll be able to show here is going from 60 to 120. Again, this will show 59 because we're at a, not quite at actually 120, we're at 119.94. Uh, but here we'll go to the lossless scaling app, um, and we'll go into times two frame generation mode. And so this will take us from 60 uh, to 120. And again, the times two frame generation mode is available um, in the app currently even before June 6th. And again, it really does look smooth as long as you're able to maintain that base 60 frames per second. Um, and again, if your screen was 144 frames per second, then you would be needing to maintain 72 frames per second. You want, uh, and if you're playing a game that doesn't have its own, you know, half rate V-Sync or third rate, uh, you know, one third V-Sync, uh, you might need to ins instill your own frame rate limiters via third-party tools or maybe a driver app. We just got a small frame rate dip as I loaded into this, and I definitely noticed the smoothness uh, buckled. But again, I think that was the game kind of hitting a little bit of a loading thing. So again, as long as you are maintaining that half, uh, half rate uh, of your monitor's refresh rate, the times two mode, again, 
looks pretty smooth, although once again, um, image quality artifacts. And now another thing I'll mention as far as uh, trying to hit the um, the monitor's uh, you know half refresh rate is that the lossless scaling app does have a performance cost. Enabling this has a performance cost. So if you were able to hit 60 FPS but just barely without this running, your GPU might not be able to hit 60 FPS with this running. So you need some headroom uh, in order to be able to run this and still maintain that frame rate and bump up. So those are all, all, all things to think about. But so, but overall, you know, it is pretty cool that this actually works. Now, there are certain games where I think that this might uh, play better than others. Again, the more slower paced the game is, um, uh, probably the better, because really where frame generation has issues, where we get those uh, frame rate interpolation problems, uh, again, if we kick this back on, it disables whenever I kind of tab out. Um, with this kicking back on here, uh, again, why are we getting these these interpolation issues? Again, the, the larger difference there is between frames, uh, the more issues we'll have. So you can see running from the 60 base frame rate, um, so there'll be smaller differences between frames than we, when we were at 40 base frame rate. Uh, there's still mo uh, artifacts here, but they're not as bad. Uh, same thing with the cursor, but it, it's definitely still there. So the higher frame rate you use this from, the fewer image quality artifacts you'll have and probably just overall best experience you'll have. But once again, you're going to be limited by your display's refresh rate because you need to be at an even multiple, um, uh, an even factor of the display's uh, refresh rate for this to work properly. Now there's certain games where I think that this will be uh, really cool. Uh, like Elden Ring, for example. So why don't we try that out? Because Elden Ring caps to 60 FPS um, with no way to go beyond that, at least officially in the game. Now, I think Elden Ring is a cool test case for this because Elden Ring is locked to 60 frames per second. It just won't let you go past that. Uh, that's how the game developers made the game. Now, sure, there's mods and things where you can try to uh, remove those sorts of limits, uh, but the game as is is a 60 FPS experience. You don't get to go beyond that. However, again, lossless scaling isn't going to try to make the game run past that. Uh, it's just going to interpolate frames. And now we should see it kick in and suddenly we get uh, twice the motion fluidity. Although, again, still some minor, uh, you know, artifacting on things um, and all of that. But it, it again, it, it does very noticeably improve the motion fluidity of what we have available. So pretty cool. And I think this is, in my opinion, one of the better use cases, maybe not even just this specific game, but just games that have an artificial limit to their frame rates or games whose physics are tied to the frame rate, so going beyond a certain frame rate even through mods can sometimes mess with them. Uh, that's a cool use case for frame generation to uh, boost the motion fluidity without messing with the game's physics or trying to uh, disable those types of frame rate limiters. So that's pretty cool. And, and you know what? I really think visually it actually is working pretty well here, uh, going from 60 to 120. Uh, if I look at my compass, like sometimes the letters can get a little bit garbled on that. Um, but you know, honestly, in motion, it's seeming to hold up pretty well, as long as your PC can hold up uh, to keep that base uh, stable 60 frames per second. So pretty cool stuff. Now for some final thoughts on this, I do think this is a pretty cool program. Uh, for one thing, it uh, it's called lossless scaling, not lossless frame generation, because this app was out before it even had frame generation. So it has some cool frame generation, uh, not sorry, uh, some scaling modes uh, where you can scale with FSR1, that's the spatial upscaler, NVIDIA's kind of spatial upscaler, integer scaling, nearest neighbor scaling, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. They've got their own LS1 scaling. So uh, if you're also just looking to upscale this app has a lot of options, which is pretty cool. And also, again, with the frame generation being an active development, they've improved it from version 1.1 to 2.1. Uh, and like I said, now they're uh, be releasing this times three mode, which uh, neither AMD nor Nvidia have uh, yet released a times three uh, frame generation tool which really is kind of cool. Also, they have a performance mode, which will be slightly worse quality, uh, but does um, uh, take less GPU headroom in order to do it. 
Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff available in here. Now note that while they have a VRR support button here, they say that that is deprecated. And again, VRR was not working properly for me in my testing, uh, and that's an acknowledged issue. So again, you, you do have to be putting um, some work into making sure that you're running at half your display rate if you're gonna times two, or you're running at uh, exactly one third of your display rate in order to do times three. But I think that it, it can be a cool experience um, to have. The app's not super expensive. Like I said, I don't think this is gonna be for everybody uh, because for some people, uh, the image quality artifacts are gonna be too much. Honestly, for me personally, uh, that's probably where I'm at. I'm that same way with AFMF, the driver level frame generation from AMD, because for me, the it can just be a bit distracting. However, I know a lot of people really enjoy AFMF and looking at the reviews on this on Steam, a lot of people seem to really enjoy this and I could certainly see there being uh, use cases for it. Uh, like I said, especially apps that are locked to uh, certain frame rates um, and being able to kind of work around that. So. I think that overall this is really cool. I think it would be even uh, easier to use if it had better you know, variable refresh rate support. Uh, so you didn't have to be so careful to be hitting those um, even multiples and everything like that. But uh, while it's not free, it's not super expensive. And I, I, like I said, I'm pretty picky about uh, frame generation artifacts. Um, whereas I think a lot of people are less bothered by that. So um, I really think it might be worth checking out. And I also like that it seems to be in very active development. Seems like they're getting major updates every month. Uh, like I said, including this times three frame, frame generation mode. So um, yeah, I'd encourage you guys to check it out and see how it works for you. Uh, again, just make sure that you're, um, oh, also you have to run the game in a borderless full screen or, or a windowed mode, I think for, for proper uh, uh, scaling and, and, and support and everything like that. So anyway, there's a lot of stuff you gotta do to get it working right. Look at all the, uh, the details available, um, but I think if you do get it set up right, it really does produce a smooth output if you can lock to that um, even multiple of the refresh rate, which is pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.